<clears throat> Hello guys, good, good evening to everyone and thank you so much for everyone who registered to this event. Uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes. Uh, we're just waiting for a few people to join us to, to tonight. And for our first session on, on our first week of uh, design and development for the entire month of June, we have Harvey J. Season and uh, he will talk about UX behind the scenes. Design and engineering team culture at User Experience Society. So I think it's, it's going to be very useful for everyone. Um, and he will share the journey of UX Society um, and also the projects that they've had in the past. So uh, can you uh, stay tuned in and we'll just wait for a few more guys to join us tonight. So for everyone who just tuned in, um, who weren't part of our previous online Saturday sessions, you can use the comment section. If you're watching on YouTube or, or on Facebook, you can use the comment section to send in your questions or recommendations for our uh, next sessions. And again, um, June is Design and Development Month, so we will focus on UX, design, and uh, we will also have speakers to talk about uh, mobile development for Android, iOS, and Flutter as well. So next week, we will talk about Flutter uh, with uh, the, 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 one of the community leaders for Flutter PH. And and in the, uh, and in the next month, we'll focus more on uh, design as well, just to give everyone an opportunity to hear it from uh, design professionals. Okay, let's start. So hello guys and good evening and thank you so much for tuning in to TechPH. Uh, this is our first week of our Design Development Month and uh, this I'm Luis Baring, your host, and today we are joined by Harvey J. Season of UX Society, a student community based in uh, Ateneo. So again, you can leave your comments and your questions in uh, the comment section, uh, recommendations for future uh, online sessions. We will get back to you on that. And also we will reserve the questions at the end of the presentation. And just uh, yeah, a, a little change on tonight's uh, series of sessions. Uh, we will have to reschedule product design next week as well. So uh, UX fundamentals will be um, on the same time slot and uh, Harvey will probably be uh, doing his talk a little bit longer than, than planned. But uh, for those of you who registered to the to the UX fundamentals with Rain Liao, um, kindly you can just go back to the Facebook page or to the YouTube channel, and and we will go live at exactly eight in the evening tonight. Okay, and again, leave your questions in the comments. And if you if you did not register to this event uh, previously, you can use the registration link provided in the description of the video, so that you so that I can send you the the session packs used by our uh, by our specialist tonight. And also we will provide you the references used. And also if you have any questions that you're not able to answer tonight, you can also um, connect us through Facebook, um, send us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And for our design and development month next, uh, next week, we will have an introduction to progressive web apps and developing for Android and iOS with Flutter. Um, the, the next, the following weeks, we will have Android native development, iOS native development, and introduction to game design and game development. And uh, please also keep uh, checking our Facebook page for the for for the registration link, okay? Because it's very important for you to register so that we can uh, send you the the session packs. Okay, and don't forget to follow our page and register to the event again. And uh, for you, for those of you who have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, that's a that's actually our way of reaching out to more students and professionals 
uh, so that they can see our the content the content we are creating uh, every Saturday. So uh, kindly subscribe to our channel as well. And uh, this session is powered by RecruitDay.com. Um, just a few things that I want to talk about. Um, for those of you who would like to find a career uh, as an Android developer, uh, Recruit Day actually has a good, oppor a great opportunity for you. All you have to do is scan the QR code. You can apply for for that job, or you can also refer your friends to to this great, this wonderful opportunity. And since we're already talking about design, I think it's also good to understand a little bit about uh, design thinking. So RecruitDay.com is also doing a session on, an online session on design thinking for all you designers out there. So let me just put it up here. Okay, sorry about that, guys. And again, the QR code that you're looking at right now on your screen is for the Android developer opportunity. So. Uh, if you're looking for uh, a job as an Android developer, you can scan that QR code, or of course you can always just uh, you can always refer that job to your friends as well. So, and if you want to learn more about all the job opportunities that we have in Recruit Day, you can just visit RecruitDay.com. Okay, so uh, let me now introduce you to. Harvey. Hi, Harvey. How are you to tonight? I'm doing fine. How about you, sir? How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. And thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this uh, online session with us. Uh, and I think it's going to be very interesting to hear it from from someone uh, from 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 a student perspective. So, can you give us a background about about you, Harvey? Okay. So again, I would like to thank Sir Luis and behalf of Tech the Asia Garden Group and Week for inviting me here in this you know humble series that you have provided, and I'm really excited at, uh, and at, at the same time nervous because I'll be the one you know breaking the ice for the design and development work that you have planned. But to introduce myself, um, I said I'm a student, um, but I'm training to be a full staff, you know, software engineer, hopefully, um, and aspiring to be a technopreneur. So it's a mix of an entrepreneur specialized in tech. Um, and also, you know, and being with UX, user experience society, I really love, you know, and being an enthusiast of user experience. So I'm taking management engineering from the Ateneo and Manila University. And even though I'm a student, I'm also like working part time, you know, in a startup called Sora Technologies Incorporated, and has been, you know, um, with the experience and learning more about things. Um, I do freelance um, in design studios and other things that are available. And then lastly, I'm happy that I've been here with you, Sir Experience Society, for. Um, more than two years, so I think this is my third year already, and I'm happy that I have found it also um, as a humble or co developer student clubs, Yola. So, um, Sir Luis, am I allowed to start, or do you have any more um, things to add with this? Well, well, I think uh, I'm all I'm all good, uh, Harvey, and uh, we will just uh, use most of the time uh, with you presenting or telling us all about UX society. Thank you so much, Arvi. The, the floor is the floor is yours. Okay, so now that um, I'll be um, the one speaking all throughout, now I, I've entitled my presentation "UX Behind the Scenes: Design, Engineering, Team Culture, and User Experience Society." So um, here I'll talk about more on a general view on how we approach things. Um, so this is more on leadership and strategy. Um, more on building human resources and building the culture, the things that we have in user experience society. But let me start with a quote. Every great design begins with an even better story. So previously when I you know I entered college, my 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 perspective of design is mostly about the aesthetics, um, the visuals, that's all what that I know. But um delving into like learning it together with User experience society. I have realized that this design is intertwined 
with the um with uh, problem solving as well as a narrative so let me begin with a narrative my ux story so my, i started my user experience society journey um you know in the second year but in my first year um as a management student i, I was learning core curriculum or subjects but then um something struck me while you know being in the um undergrad undergraduate senior year my first freshman year um this quote kind of struck me when i was you know um being in my under my freshman year don't let schooling interfere with your ed education so um here parang it was my dream kasi parang to be part of the tech and design um, industry and how can i be part of it if hindi ako mag-aaral like hindi, i won't be you know i won't take steps to achieve it so what did i do um simultaneously while, while doing academics um in my free time i go online learn tech courses so i i can give you hints later during the q a session on how to delve into online education but that that was my way my stepping stone into learning you know into design and technology and with that i've learned you know the basic html css um some simple design um, basics and then um in my second year i was happy that user experience society was um you know recruiting for um for an individual who wants to lead the engineering team so i applied for it and i'm thankful that the, the things that i've learned online and the projects that I did on my own was really helpful and beneficial to that, you know, to that position. And with that, I was able to help user experience society in all of its engineering aspects moving forward. And right now, I'm in my third year with the organization. So um, about user experience society, we're a student-run organization that advocates and practices human-centered design in solving problems in the community um and to add you know their history it was founded by alexis g and Ian, um last 2015 so i'm happy um that we're already in our fifth year um and these are some of our projects that we will reimagine in this you know in this um new normal ux chill ux and chill and ux university so um that's you six Experience society and here's our vision it is to nurture designers who are passionate about solving problems in the community through human centered design our mission is to um, empower people to design education and enlighten them to power design nurture them to create meaningful products for the community so um to start off let me uh, introduce you know how we structure our team as as i said a while ago um we we teach design you know throughout the process but there's a team that really learns it through client projects and internal projects and here is how we structured our team inside user experience society and um take note that this this structure has been changed uh, like um, improving over time we learn from our mistakes and improve it per year so i would say um accept you know um, accept mistakes along the process and learn from it so that you know as moving forward you are you are able to create a meaningful structure you know an uh, efficient way for your team so let me start um this is the design team that we have we have a product manager um he or she actively manages projects and ensures in that they are executed well um Basically, a product manager is responsible for all the project-related deliverables. So, um, usually, the product manager is our vice president for consultancy. So, the vice president for consultancy reaches out to clients, um, talks to these clients, and then internally, he or she is the one um, instructing us what the client wants, what we want for the project, and um, that's how he or she leads us. And then, together with the product manager, um there's a design lead so this design lead is the one in charging in charge rather with the um all the ux design related stuff all the design related stuff so 
Kung si product manager is about the project related deliverables, si pro design lead is about the product related deliverables. So usually, um, the design lead is um, in its figure is the vice president for user experience design. So those are the positions that we have in the UX society where she, he or she is the one, you know, helping out teaching students to apply the design um, methodology as well as design um, lessons he himself or herself has learned through the experiences and teaching it to the younger ones and applying it to projects. Um, yeah, so next in the design team, we have UX researchers and product designers. These UX researchers usually um, are the um, the people that are in there that have it, that have no background at all but want to learn um, more about UX and they can fit between two sides, the user research side or the product design side. So the user researcher um, investigates, uses data, um, you know, to formulate in-depth insights. So that using this in-depth insights, we can try to, um, so that when we turn over to the product design team, so these are the people who will create the wireframes, mockups, and prototypes based on the data gathered uh, from the user and customer research. Um, so as you would see, it's really um, like intertwined together, the product manager helping out in the project-related tasks, the design lead uh, overseeing all the design-related tasks with regards to the product. The UX researcher does the one who goes goes to the users and the customers and learning more about them using user interviews and all those finding those data points and translating it into something that the product designers can understand and with that with that um information they translate it into um into stories that can be influenced you know in the in the features of a certain product so um as I said, I'm the current vice president for engineering of User Experience Society. And um, this is how my team is structured um, inside the organization or inside a product team. So engineering lead, he or she transform design into the technological masterpieces, um, into usable, accessible, desirable, um, the UX honeycomb, as they say. And he or she is also responsible for managing dev sprints and concerns. So um, as usually the engineering lead is me. So um, it will be the vice president for engineering who will be in overseeing all the related tasks of the engineering team. Um, but if ever sobrang dumami yung project, like hindi kaya, like I personally can't handle multiple projects simultaneously, um, I'll give it to um, an associate vice president to lead the project. So that's how uh, we work in the engineering team. And as you would know, engineering has a large learning curve and um, it it's prone to burn out. So uh, we really put measures in place so that um, it wouldn't be me personally doing all the work and giving chance to others to lead and find their niche in, um, in this kind of work. So next is the engineering assistant lead. So he or she, you know, as the assistant of the engineering lead in leading front end or back end engineering teams and contribute to the growth of each developer. So usually the engineering assistant lead is the associate vice president of the um, engineering department. We have two ABPs, as I would say, there's front end and back end. So they help me out in um, in those aspects. So the front end helps me with the front end aspect. So what is front end? It is more on the user interface side, so it's what the users and customers see. So technically right now, the thing that you're viewing here in Facebook or in YouTube is the front end. And everything behind what you see is the back end, so the servers, the database, those um, are being led, you know, assisted by the ABP for back end. So that's um, a summary of the leadership um, in the engineering team and in the um, lower level, we have front-end engineers and back-end engineers. So, as said, um, these are students that are interested in delving into front-end engineering or back-end engineering. So, the front-end engineers delve into the user interface built by the design team. So, 
um, usually they'll be the one in charge, you know, playing around with HTML, CSS, and maybe JavaScript if, if it's needed. So um, they're the one responsible to make the, the code responsive as much as possible to most screens and browsers. And on the other side, the backend engineers, um, together they build, you know, um, I'm sorry, build the backend and um, servers for, uh, sorry, I have a typo there, but the back um, databases and servers of a certain project. Now that you have known the structure of the team, um, let me show you um, the, the project cycles. So here, um, I would say again, this is really an evolution form, if I would say, of um, how um, things change over time to make to make things more uh, make things better in our project cycle. So let me start with this. So assuming, let's give a scenario. Um, user experience society is currently have. Um, let's say that user experience society has no project at all at, as of the moment. And then given that the pandemic came, this new normal came, every, there's a big demand in, um, in web development, web design, and those kinds of um, things. So there's a certain company or organization that reach out to user experience society um, and says, okay, um, we want your organization to create, to design and create a website for us to inform of our advocacies. Let's say that's a scenario. So what would be the process? The VP for consultancy or our product manager reaches out to them, discuss um, the scope of the proposal, um, discusses um, you know the budget, everything related to that project, and then once agreed, sign in a memorandum of agreement. Um, we go to this first uh, phase, which we call the onboarding. So the product manager, the design lead, and the engineering lead host. Okay, mali English with that, a project onboarding session. So in this, um, we brief the team in, um, of the main deliverables of a project. So um, in this onboarding, we already have tapped people in our pool of engineers and designers if they're interested to work. So for example, if I'm a product, if I'm part of the uh, pool of members and the, v the VPs tap you, for example, for a project, and if you're interested, you'll be part of that project team. So in that project team, um, or rather in the onboarding session, we teach you um, or we show you what are the main deliverables of the project and then break down into smaller groups to discuss specific um, deliverables needed to achieve the project. So by meaning of dividing it into smaller groups, uh, the design team would have their own um, separate meeting to discuss maybe design sprints, um, design deliverables that they needed. And then for, on my case, um, I'll call my team, um, have a small group with the engineering team discuss what are ex the expectations needed for that certain project, the timeline, the dev speeds, everything related to that. And um, all throughout my experiences, um, remember, um, always remember that don't delve into, you know, designing and coding immediately. Um, remember to um, to focus, you know, planning first with the team, uh, because if you if you didn't plan beforehand on the things that you will do, um, lalong tatagal yung project, lalong maraming changes in between, um, maraming quality fixes um, during the, the, the development and design process, which we don't want to happen because, as I said, a project is a, a, a specific task, as a specific deliverable with a limited time. So it has a start and an end. So kailangan talaga beforehand, um, madami dapat ko, matagal yung oras that you have invested into the planning. So that's why we have this onboarding session. And so after onboarding, um, na plan siya na lahat, na kailangan, um, alam, alam ng both ng design team and the engineering team on the approaches, we delve into the first phase, which is um, user research design team works on conducting user and stakeholder, you know, customer interviews to derive in-depth insights from data. 
And then, um, so, once the data is gathered, the team again convenes for what we call an alignment meeting. Both the designers, the managers, and the developers provide their views with regards to information gathered. Um, yeah, so why did we have an alignment meeting? First of all, um, it's one of the mission of the org to really teach everyone about the design process. So we want the engineering team, my team, to be part of the design process so they can give insight and also learn through the observations, you know, from the design team. So I think um, throughout my experience, even though I'm not hands on, you know, in, in wireframing, user research, and prototyping, I was able to learn kind of step by step of the things that um, the design process has um, laid upon. So, yeah, so by bringing in the engineering team as well as all the managers um, on that project into an alignment meeting, sabay sabay kami matutuko. And I think that's a very important aspect that um, not just an organization or that this community should have. I think. Uh, most groups should have this, um, you know, this this value for learning. Next is um, after the alignment meeting, um, we now go on to the wireframing prototyping. So, yeah, na plano na yung mga data points, na plano na yung mga structure of how the website will go. Um, then it will be the design team's job to create the wireframes, prototypes. Yeah, so that's basically it. Um, I think I will not delve into what, what is wireframing and prototyping. The other speakers um, by Luis, by techph.org, has already prepared things for you. But, um, to, um, but to give you a brief um, intro about these things, the wireframing and prototyping is mostly where you design already the user interface that you will have for the product and testing it. Um, so that before the development team works on it, uh, it's already like um, it has already reached the users because you have validated the things that you have created there. So yeah, so that's it. And then here's um, another meeting that, that the product manager, design lead, engineering lead host. It's what we call a design dev, dev third over. So in this meeting, the design team briefs the engineering team with regards to um, the design system, so the branding, perhaps the user interface components and all the other necessary details. Um, we have realized all throughout the process that um, if wala, wala communication between the design and engineering team, parang mag -iib, mag yung kalalabasan. Kasi remember, it's the design team who conceptualize these things, and then is ang job lang ng engineering is to, to just convert it into design. But if the engineering team doesn't really like know that the design process behind um, the design team, hindi nila may gets yung um, how to implement a certain action, a certain feature. Kaya nga in this de design and the de dev turnover process, it is the engineering team provides insight as well, brings up clarification with regards to design and features created. Um, yeah, so once we've agreed upon that gets uh, mostly, uh, you know, like 100% yung, yung design interfaces, we now move to the development. So this is where um, the front end team does the user interface design um, in code, at this simultaneously, it is the backend's job to build, you know, servers and data for a database it says based on the data points gathered, you know, used previously in the user interface, and also um, with regards to the design created. And after this development phase, it is required to hold the quality assurance session. So this is where the design team um, approaches the engineering team again, and then. Um, Checks, you know, checks the design. If saktong sakto ba kung may pangit ba na may pangit ba na code at a certain um at a certain screen. So it's really ensuring that once we turn over to the client, okay na siya. Like um, it's in the UX wise, it's already something that the user would want. And syempre, um, 
we want the best quality given to the uh, to our clients. So once that has happened, okay, na yung quality assurance, na address na yung mga bugs, as they would say. Um, this is the time that we turn over the development, the code or the application to to the client. So after that, once we turn over it to the client, we host this you know, what we so called post project bonding session. So this is where we give um, the project evaluation because we want to learn from the process that we have conducted with the team and also distribute you know, their compensation. Um, because in user experience society, we value our designers well. So we don't want to show everyone that, you know, that Arts and design has you know no money. So what we do is we really compensate them for their hard work. Even also the engineering team that you know that has really um, tremendous you know effort as well. So both design and engineering teams benefit um, receives their benefit from their hard work. So yeah. So as said, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. So as you put your users. In the center of all the process, um, you should also um, put learning first in everything because you need to validate things, not just you know product-wise, but also um, within the team. So you you just keep learning, um, improve the things, the mistakes that you have with your process or maybe with the product, and then turn it, make, transforming it to something that um, it's valuable. For both the product and the team yeah so now let me share you some tools that we use in user experience society um according also to the data gathered by um sir Luis, it was one of the things that people are interested in exploring so these are what i would say the productivity hacks of user experience society so let me start first with this um some productivity tools that we have is figma and um illustrator so let me share, let me exit the screen and show you um, this first. So if you're a student, um, you can apply for a Figma education, free education plan. So let, let's scroll down. So students get tools that tools use for free. And you apply for the program. Once you get accepted, you will have something like this. Yeah, so as you would see, what in an education plan, what will happen? You have unlimited projects, unlimited editors, viewers, shareable uh, libraries. So this, and it's free for two years. So this is what's great um, with the Figma education plan. And what's cool about is that you can create your own project team. So this is the uh, project team of User Experience Society as of the moment. And um, we have, this is the team has had, and here we can create more projects. Uh, we can click this design system, the colors, so uh, we can showcase everything. We can collaborate online, especially in the, in the time such as this. So yeah, so this is how um, awesome Figma is. So um, you can use this as your design tool um, for your organization, and which we really like because um, as someone using a Windows uh, computer, um, Design tools such as Sketch is not accessible for me. So that's why uh, I think the team, the organization moved into using Figma for for um, collaboration purposes. Yeah, so it's really cool. These are the, you know, the design. You can prototype things. You can also see the code. Yeah, so the, the code, work, the things. So it's really, um, it's really what do you call this? Um, beneficial to both the design and the engineering teams. And also, um, if you would look at our pubs, we also use Figma in a way at the same time with Illustrator to create our pub mats. So uh, since it's, I know, it's what we call this, it's uh, for collaboration, um, everyone can just give inputs to a certain project. As you can see, you can also give comments in this aspect yeah so um that's uh, that's a hack that we use and illustrator as you would know um it's a, a very great tool to use in creating design related aspects 
So moving after this design tools, let's move into you know uh, document organization tools. So um, usual, uh, we use the Google Drive. So we utilize uh, the collaboration feature of Google Docs, of Google Sheets, and Google Slides. And we have this um, archive of folders in the Google Drive where we divide it per department. Um, people can have access depending on their permissions. So it's really a good tool. And recently we have explored um, and moved into Notion. So as the same as Figma, Notion has a um, student um, plan. So Notion for student, it's one workspace for all your class notes, work, class, and side hustles. So it's really um, a great tool that you can use. It has both a, a mobile version and a web version, and even a native version. So right now I'm showing the web version. Um, yeah, so that's really an important tool that you can use. So here um, we showcase our, here we do our Kaban. Kanbans, the, the project management tools. We also use this for documentation. Yeah, so pretty much you can do all the things um, in Notion. So it's a really good hack, especially for team to explore this um, kind of tool. So moving forward, this is more on the tech side. So we have GitLab and GitHub. So um, let me share. So this is um, the UX Society GitLab account. So I will share the, the mismo projects because those are client projects. Um, in GitLab, here's where we store um, what we call this, our client, our private repositories because they have a, like, a good pricing model for private repositories. At the same time, um, they have a great, um, what we call this, um, CICD. Um, aspect so that's continuous integration and delivery so if you have projects that need that I think GitLab is a good aspect for you so that's how you can create a group and you can add the people in the team and that can help out with this kind of work so I think everyone knows this it's GitHub so this is uh, you can create an organization uh, and we created UXOC, so here's where we uh, put our projects that are internal. So we can pop, we can show it publicly to people who want to learn more about design or our um, internal projects. Yeah, so that's one of the um, tech hacks that we have. And then we also have another tech hack, which is, um, this is Netlify. So, and this is GoDaddy. So let me start first with GoDaddy. GoDaddy is um, um, our centralized, um, what do you call this? A centralized platform where we buy our domains. So if you would go to GoDaddy, you can just search for a domain, buy it, and just store it there. And what's good about it is that I can just connect those domains to the to Netlify. So here's my account. Um, that in Netlify, you can deploy sites that was um, like, like by just a click of a button. So let's here's an overview. Um, you can click the deploy. You can you know you can really deploy it from um, your repository. So it's just instant, talaga. Um, it's a really great tool that we have discovered thanks to the inputs from our officers, our team. So we have been using it especially to host our front end um, code. So. This is this renders only front end. So if you need, you know, server side rendering, you would have to explore other related platforms. Yeah. So if you want to deploy something, your HTML, CSS is very quick. Uh, explore, let me fly. Yes. So uh, moving forward, we have Jamboard and Discord. So what's Jamboard? What Discord? So let me. Oh yeah. Let me search Jamboard. There. So Jamboard um, is a great tool in the Google Suite, which um, you can do. Let me create one. So it's you can, it's like a whiteboard. 
you can you can put post here here it's Especially this time, such as that we're trying to explore also user experience society. And I think for um, your team, you can use this as well in your um, in your design process. So um, we'll be using Jamboard for our um, user researches, um, creating data points that could be used to have the design team create wireframes and prototypes. Lastly, um, is Discord. So Discord, you might know Discord um, for game servers, but we have used, we have transitioned to Discord, uh, what do you call this, for our workspace. So to give you a brief background, we, we tried, you know, using Facebook Messenger and then Dahil marami na kami group chats, we tried, you know, Facebook Workplace. And then, just keep trying. And I think um, it is through Discord that right now everyone is having um, much fun. And like more interaction is being kept in place. So you can try Discord out, you can create a server. Um, and then there, so this is our, um, this is our server in Discord. So um, it's, these are some tools that you can use in your um, organization and you, which I think what's good about Discord is you can uh, you can assign roles for a certain person, um, certain individual, certain account. So you can assign, what do you call this? You can, um, you can assign administrator, um, several categories in that matter, and then you can assign it to a certain channel lang or all the channels that are needed. So you can really tweak it based on your um, team's culture, um, methodologies, and everything else. So now um, that we have um, is this one, the culture of user experience experience society. Um, I tried to gather from you know my, my friends and the work in user experience society to get um, some insights from there. What is the culture about of UXO? Um, so I would say these are the top five things that we have now in place in user experience society. First is a growth mindset. So we we strongly recommend that people learn um, with the learn more about UX at the same time, you know, grow their, have growth in their personal development. And also thanks to the strong, um, what do you call this, um, strong presence of our alumni, there's a strong mentorship system in user experience society. And I think it's one of the things that I'm thankful for, because if not for the um, guidance of our alumni, um, Hindi kami mag grow into this kind of sense. So they're the ones who give um, critiques in our design process, in our engineering process, and even in um, in our leadership strategy. So it is through th those um, those inputs from professionals, our professional alumni, um, we are able to learn from our mistakes. And also, I think um, one thing that I like about UXO is the transparency that we have. Um, so we're putting things in place to make it, um, to inform our team um, the things that are need, they needed to be informed with. And I think um, we're putting in place to address our member engagement issues by having bonding sessions. And lastly, we have an anti burnout policy because, you know, as said, doing design and maybe engineering work simultaneously might lead to a burnout for a certain individual. So right now we're doing certain, we're, we're capping certain things um, so that, you know, we don't burn out mga tao, especially me that I'll, myself that I'll be working in, you know, the, more on the development side of things. So I think you might ask, 
how do we build our culture in such a time as this in you know in this pandemic um so here's here's what i've got then for you um new normal culture i think you should focus more on outpost based things rather than strict time schedules especially for your members that don't have you know interconnection um that much i think it's best to really have output based um deliverables next is establish your own communication channel so for for uxoc we have chosen discord as our platform where we can stream we can voice um voice and video calls so that's where we want to host our workspace and then also for um this i think it is a job of the leaders to also organize virtual bonding session and i think with this three you can usher step by step you know have a culture virtually even though you are distance apart yeah so i think to end let me end with the code that i've created um, with the help of you know, a from my friends while the team designs a product user experience it is job the leader to design great team experience and that's all. Thank you very much um, for inviting me to your sample talk. Um, and hope you learned a lot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Harvey, for that. And um, I think we have a few questions, though. Uh, some of the questions will require uh, lengthy answers, so I don't think they can be answered uh, during this live stream. So we will just uh, I'll just send you the the question through email. And then we will send the, the answers to to everyone who registered to this event as well, you know, just to to give them uh, to give more value to their experience. Uh, but what I really want to ask you as well, uh, Harvey, you mentioned you mentioned earlier about the different roles within uh, the project team, right? So, what are your recommendations for someone who is unsure of which area to specialize in? Sorry, Are, oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. I'm muted pala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, for that aspect, I think, um, let me go back to those slides. Um, in the... This kind of... Um, Usually, because uh, <clears throat> am I choppy? Yeah, yeah so, I think we got uh, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Am I am I back? Sorry. Oh yeah, you're, you're um, Sorry again. I'm so sorry for the technical difficulty. So, uh, to answer that question, um, we have these two positions. You know the parang hindi mga hindi leadership type which people can explore. So if you want to explore, for example, um, the U the UX research side of things, you can apply or we can tap you as a UX research um, individual. So role. So by doing that, you get to experience um, the UX uh, the research side of things in UX. And then if you want something more um, into creating the user interface you get to um, assign things in by being the product designer. Uh, what I'm saying is, um, I think for students as well, and even the prof young professional don't know where to to start with, um, I think it's best it's best to have first a role um, that you think that you're interested in. So if, let's say, I'm interested to be a UX researcher, which I am really interested to be one, um, I'll delve myself into the role of the UX researcher. And then from there, um, I um, I do the task of a UX researcher. And also, since you work in a team, you collaborate with different roles, you, you get to experience also the things that the product designers are doing. So um, you I, I think the best thing that I could say is you observe them, what they do. Um, and then if you think na Gusto mo siyang itry in the next project. I um, ask your leaders to to uh, if you can be 
you can try the product design team or uh, be part of the product design um, team. So that's the same for front end. So if um, if a certain student is interested to explore uh, front end engineering, Okay, so we'll just wait for Harvey to reconnect. Am I back? And welcome back, Harvey. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I'm not sure if it's my internet or something. But um, to add, what I'm saying is, I think the first step to think of, especially for those people trying to explore, pick one road first that you think are interested in, or something that you're confident to, you know, to put your time and effort in. And then after work, then after that, you know, do the task of that research, delve into that experience. And then if there's an opportunity that arises, try another role um, that we think you can um, you can manage. And then um, I think that I learned about UX office, in UX office, I think it's best to have mentors um, in that role. So by having mentors, you, you don't just get to to try out to learn, but also have hands-on experience um, and lessons from professionals. Yeah, so I think um, that's my answer for your question. Did, uh, was that okay for you, Luis? Yeah, I think that, that was a great answer. And I think it's really important as well to specialize. And uh, your point was to also explore and experience other areas in uh, UX. And I think that's very interesting. Um, and also for the online Saturday sessions that we're having in the future, and then later we will talk about UX fundamentals and we will try to be more specific uh, in uh, July. So due to popular demand, we're doing this uh, further into the design uh, series this July, which, uh, which includes workshops, online sessions and community talks. And uh, you mentioned the tool Figma earlier, uh, Harvey. So we will also have a few people from Figma who will share to us uh, the different functions of the tool because like, I think it's very exciting because you're able to create uh, wireframes, high fidelity prototypes and all that. So, and you'll hear it from, from people who, who do this on a daily basis. So I think it's very exciting. And uh, for those who'd like to be part of that, um, kindly um, keep on checking our Facebook page as well. So we will post, uh, as soon as we've confirmed the speakers, we will post the registration link. And for those who have not registered to Harvey's, uh, presentation tonight, uh, can you do so so that we can share to you the presentation as well. And if you have any other questions, you can also connect us. Uh, I mean, uh, send us an email and or send us a message here on Facebook or uh, simply leave a leave a comment right there. So and additionally, um, thank you so much, uh, Harvey, for the time. And we're also uh, Harvey is also part of the Developer Student Council. So we'll have a few guys, a few students from DSE will be spending time with us uh, next Thursday, every Thursday uh, of, of, of this month, of June, sorry, um, to talk about their their projects and how how it how it's like to be to be a tech student, you know, um, especially during this uh, new normal uh, thing that that's going on. Uh, so um, Harvey, I think we just have one uh, one question here from Dario Vallejos, and I think uh, I think we can answer this. Uh, uh, show it on screen. Is the UX society strictly dealing with software products, or are there are there groups for physical products as well? Um, so thank you for that wonderful question. So in recent years, um, well, per se, the user experience can be applied. Is uh, uh, let me rephrase it. User experience, you know, that methodology. Is not strict for um, software um, per se. It can apply also to you know to um, to IoT, to hardware because it's about problem solving. But in the case of user experience society, um, there 
I would say that we, we don't have uh, um, people specialized in working you know, with, with the IoT side of things. But I think it's something that we can explore soon if we have you know, the capability. But yeah, um, in summary, UX can be used to any type of problem solving um, app for a product. But in the case of our, our humble organization, um, it is, I think we're limited to the software products because that's what we can um, provide our capabilities as of the moment. Okay, and thank I hope, you. Dario, that, if that answers your question. Yeah. yeah, hopefully it does. And if, if Dari, if you have any uh, additional question um, in line to that, uh, you can leave a comment and we'll get back to you ASAP. So um, again, um, we will be rescheduling uh, product design. So uh, Harvey gave us a, a very uh, thorough introduction into the world of uh, UX product design. Um, we will reschedule uh, Pierce Jonathan's uh, talk on product design next week. So we will be announcing the the time also, uh, probably by uh, Monday, and uh, the next session will be with Rain Liao. Um, he's a UX researcher, and uh, she's a U UX researcher uh, who will who will give us more details into the the world of UX. You know, for for those who are not familiar with what UX is all about, um, it's also just like a review for those who are already uh, practitioners and students. Um, and also design thinking so for okay let me just also add here that we have uh, recruit days doing a an introduction to design thinking talk so it's an online self-paced uh, learning um so just kindly scan the qr code there or you can also go to bootcamp.recruitday.com and for all Android developers, uh, you can scan the QR code if you want. If you're looking for an opportunity as an Android developer, or if you would know anyone who is interested, you know, to apply, and uh, of course, there's a referral incentive as well for that. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Harvey, for the time. I think that's uh, that's all the time that we have tonight. But this won't be the last time that uh, we'll have Harvey talk about UX and product design. I think we'll definitely have him in the future as well. So uh, UX is a, is a very interesting topic, and I think a lot of people are very interested in it, even people who are not in technology. Um, and we hope that with the online courses that we're doing every Saturday, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we encourage more people to get involved um, in this, in this uh, very prolific career. And we're also doing Wednesday workshops. So aside from that, uh, starting July, we'll do uh, Wednesday workshops, so it's more hands-on and uh, you'll have like little projects that you will do at the end of the, the workshops and that will still be about uh, design. So guys, again, um, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for, for the time that uh, that you've spent with us. And Harvey, thank you so much for, for sharing your you um, experience and uh, your knowledge. Um, and again, later tonight at 8 p.m., we will have Rain Liao to talk about UX fundamentals. Okay, thank you, Harvey. Have a great night. Sir. Okay, bye bye guys. Uh by the way, we'll we'll end the broadcast right here and we'll post another uh live video, you know, so that uh hey, sir, can you add something? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so okay, so before we end the broadcast, I would like to say again thank you for listening to my humble talk. Hope you really learned a lot. Um, you know, my introduction now into the design process that we have or, or rather the project uh management process that we have in the digital experience society. And if you you want to reach out to me personally you can just chat uh you know the page of tech ph to reach out and if you want to um to reach out to user experience society you can just um go to our facebook page facebook.com slash ux soc s o c i'm always spelling go so yeah you can search our page and we'll ha be ha happy to entertain um your questions Again, thank you again, Luis and TechPH, especially RecruitmentPay.com for hosting this wonderful event, wonderful event, and hope people will delve more into design and development soon. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Harvey. And, uh, and and also, I would like to add that the videos will be available at the end of the session on Facebook and YouTube. 
again also it would, would really help us uh, to, to reach out to more students and professionals if you can share the content as well and subscribing to the youtube channel would also help us you know uh reach out to to, to more people who who would like to look for who are looking for uh materials created by uh, local designers local developers um because it, it's really different um and it's very relatable if if I were hearing it from from uh, Filipinos, I think. It's my opinion. Yeah, my humble opinion. Thank you guys and have a great evening. Bye-bye.